The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. The Gospel of the Lord. I think that obviously begs the question, how many of you here worry about anything? Three, four, five, six, okay, it's growing. Kind of what I figured, so um, as we heard in tonight's gospel reading from Jesus on the Sermon on His Mount, He says, do not worry, so stop worrying. Amen. Okay, in in case you were worried that that's all I had to say. Well, so honestly, I get worried when we're told something like not to worry in such a broad blanket statement. Just don't worry. I know for a fact that there are legitimate things that many of you Many people in our community and many people in this world have to worry about. And those are just things that I can name and even know of. I'm sure there is much, much more that each one of you is carrying with you this evening that genuinely causes you to worry and probably for good reason. And they, are not, and they are worries that cannot be taken away by Jesus' simple command of do not worry. And I can also almost guarantee that even Jesus knows that we carry these heavy burdens and that there are things that keep us up at night filled with worry. So why? Why would Jesus confront us in this way with Something that feels like such a glib, "Eh, don't worry about it. Well, this passage that we heard comes from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And this portion of the Sermon on the Mount seems to be dealing with stuff. Okay, With, with literal stuff, with wealth, treasures, things, possessions. If we back up a little bit, back to verse 19 in this same chapter, Jesus, he's looking at those who are rich, and he says, don't store up treasures on this earth, because they won't last. He's telling them that their focus and obsession on what they possess points their heart in the wrong direction. And then a few verses later, just before the passage we had just heard, Jesus says that focusing on accumulating these things means that you are worshiping the wrong master. Don't worry about those things because that's not what matters in this lifetime. But in saying all that, we also can't forget 
those who are hearing Jesus preach these words and hearing and, and many of us who hear it today, we may not be worried about too much stuff because there's a lot of people that don't have that much in the first place. So in the same vein, in the same sermon, Jesus is telling those gathered on the mountainside, those who are poor, those who lack many physical possessions, those who lack the daily necessities that many take for granted, Jesus is also telling them that their needs will be taken care of as well. So also, just a few verses before this Do Not Worry lecture, in this Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is teaching the crowd also how to pray. And this is where we hear him teach what we call the Lord's Prayer. And we know, since we pray this prayer so often, that one of the lines in it that Jesus teaches us to pray is, give us this day our daily bread. Jesus is encouraging us to pray to God, the creator and provider of all things, that you would receive what you truly need, your daily bread. Do not worry, because if God will clothe the plants and animals all around to you, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? I think that's really what Jesus is getting at in this do not worry speech. It's not a blanket, do not worry, but more specifically, do not worry about your life, as he says, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Indeed, says Jesus, your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things, so don't, don't worry about them. This makes me think about the small catechism, and Luther's explanation to that line in the Lord's Prayer, that they give us this day our daily bread. We talked about this explanation in council just this month, so it's been on my mind. But for this position, petition, give us this day our daily bread, the explanation goes like this, which I know you all have memorized anyway, but I'll read it. Um, Luther says, what does this mean? And he says, in fact, God gives daily bread without our prayer, even to all evil people. But we ask in this prayer that God cause us to recognize what our daily bread is and to receive it with thanksgiving. He then goes on in the catechism and says, what does this daily bread mean? And Luther says, well, everything included in the necessities and nourishment for our bodies, such as, and he lists, food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, farm, fields, livestock, money, property, an upright spouse, upright children, upright members of the household, upright and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, decency, honor, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like, in case he missed something. Hearing that explanation always makes me scratch my head. Really? God gives all of this daily bread to all people, even evil people, even without asking for it and praying for it? Really? I mean, I don't know about you, I, I look around, I see people going hungry all the time. I see kids going to school without clothes that are clean or that fit them. I hear the, the fear and the worry in different seasons over the lack of rain or too much rain or the too hot or too cold temperatures and things that ruin fields and crops and livestock and gardens and put people's lives, livelihood in jeopardy. I see marriages fall apart. I see health decline in an instant. I watch as governments and leaders fight and divide and bring about such angst and anger among his citizens. Did Luther not see any of these things? How are we not supposed to worry? Well, maybe that's what Jesus is getting to in his sermon. This idea of worry and how it ultimately shows a lack of trust in God's abundance and generosity. 
When we worry, we allow that emotion and that energy to, to point us in different directions and away from God. Our worrying can become the biggest enemy to God's love. For example, when we become so consumed with worrying about money or other possessions, our focus is taken away from the one who created and provided that daily bread. Maybe another point of this encouragement is that we're being called to think differently about our worrying. I mentioned it in my article in the Sunbeam at the beginning of this month, that those words, think and thank, well, they sound so much alike because they come from very similar root words back from their origins. And so as we gather on a night like tonight, the eve of Thanksgiving, I don't think we can begin to be thankful for what we have without being thoughtful first. We need to think differently. We need to think differently about those things in our lives and in this worry that in this world that cause us to struggle or to worry that can shift our focus. What Jesus said, can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your lifespan? Should I read that one again? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your lifespan? You can take them away, that's for sure. So what can you do about it? What's God, through God's righteousness, who is able to carry us in our time of need, It doesn't take away the things that we are worried about, but it causes us to be able to live in a different way with it, looking to the one in whom we trust. A few chapters later, here in Matthew's Gospel, we do hear Jesus preaching and teaching about how we will be called to feed the hungry and give drink to the thirsty and clothe the naked because those things do matter. Those things are part of this daily bread that we are to pray for. The things that Jesus says not to worry about here on this mountainside are really legitimate concerns. And it's promised that they will be addressed in God's kingdom. And so I think we too can address them by not worrying as much about them. We can be thoughtful and thankful, and turn to our God, the God who has created this world and and all of God's kingdom and filled it with God's very own love. We can trust in God in those moments that we feel worried and consumed. We can trust in in our Lord Jesus who has come to walk with us and carry that burden and that worry with us. And so for all of that, and truly for all of you, this evening especially, I say, thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.